We work together, we fellowship, we challenge each other's viewpoints. Our diverse backgrounds enable us to address issues in our communities we serve from a unique, multidisciplined perspective. I am incredibly grateful that 98 years ago, 22 women decided to stand together to fight for equality, suffrage, and respect, battles that se seemed insurmountable at that time. They remind me every day that the power of like-minded people coming together to achieve the impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Stewart. In terms of relevance, I think of the saying from the 60s, united we stand, divided we fall. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated and Zeta Beta Zeta Chapter has been instrumental in uniting people towards a common good of scholarship, service, sisterly love, and finer womanhood. These are still critical issues today. And lastly, the Delta Foundation uses its charitable giving service to partner with local Delta chapters. Um, with this service, local chapters are able to manage their scholarship funds, and we, do, we manage our scholarship fund through the Delta Foundation. Um, since we, do, we are not a foundation, it allows us to accept um, contributions to our foundation because it's a 501c3 organization and um, you get a tax credit for that. So um, by receiving restricted donations from sponsors, individuals, and companies uh, for local chapters, that's what the Delta Foundation does as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Now that same question to Isaiah for Alpha Phi Alpha. Nationally, nationally, Alpha Phi Alpha has established housing and education foundations. In addition, nationally, uh, we also have a brother, a local brother, who is spearheading the National Economic Initiative. His name is Brother William Picard, and he was uh, nationally recognized and appointed to spearhead the Economic Initiative. What we do is we take parts of the model from the Economic Initiative to uh, make sure, assure that our scholarship, our local scholarship, is, is a wealth building uh, initiative. So we definitely try to raise money that way we continue, can continue to afford many of the resources that we can give our young people now in the future. So we apply parts of that model. We haven't begun to um, locally empower or build awareness seminars or things of that nature, but I think that should become forthcoming. Certainly. And last but certainly not least, we'd like to have Ms. Johnson to respond to that question about economic development and entrepreneurship. Well, I think that's an area that we need to do more with. We have had opportunities to have uh, women who are in business in our, <clears throat> excuse me, in our area to come and speak to us about the services that they uh, provide and what they needed to do to get into that particular service. We've had a daycare provider, a seamstress, a real estate uh, broker, and uh, a health service worker to come and talk to us about how you get into doing what they do and what you need to do in order to help our uh, our members and their families and the young girls that we work with be more aware of, of the opportunities that are out there for them to become an entrepreneur. So we, this is an area though that we need to spend more time on, I can say that. We will rally around, especially the needs of the, uh, and the good of Flint, um, by uh, serving as pollsters as the as the need arises. We have a, a, a probably one of the biggest cheerleaders for that activity in the, the name of uh, John Frederick, and when he calls for help, we come running. So um, there's no better service that you can do than to get out the vote and provide rides or, or anything or serve as a pollster. But um, the national need uh, was probably most reflective, uh, certainly our biggest <coughs> national uh, cheerleader for uh, voting is Tom Joyner. Um, but as you all can see, it, it, it provided us great fruits in 2011, November 4th. And uh, I think we all can be proud of that. <coughs> In our organization, we are very active in supporting voters' rights and voters' registration. Um, in the last national election, um, we went to many area churches, we went to the Department of Social Services, uh, we partnered with the Divine Nine to really 
make sure that we could go to as many places as possible to get individuals registered to vote. Um, African Americans have worked very hard to have the right to vote. We don't take that for granted. So in partnership with that, or we also made sure that we were active in the census count. The census determined our representation. Zeta was very active in that. We also were active in supporting the library in Millage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also participate in the League of Women Voter activities. We participate in many forums, um, like other uh, nonprofit organizations. We cannot endorse a candidate, but we can advocate to make sure that our voices are heard. We also have Zeta Day at the Capitol. Um, we went um, to Lansing to address issues of housing rights, reducing foreclosures, and health awareness. And on the international level, we went to the UN to have Zeta Day at the United Nations to look at health disparities and the elimination of human trafficking. Great, thank you. Now we'll, that question to Delta Sigma Theta, Sharon Sawyer. Thank you. Um, as was stated by the other um, panelists, as an organization, Delta Sigma Theta is nonpartisan, so we don't directly support candidates. However, over the years, the Deltas of Flint alumni have partnered with the League of, League of Women Voters and the other local sororities here seated on the panel to sponsor, uh, co-sponsor, meet the candidate forums, voter education forums, and as well as the voter education drives. We also have held Delta Days at the Flint Board of Education, the Flint City Hall, the State Capitol, and the Nation's Capitol to learn more about the workings of the school board at the Flint Board of Education and the workings of government at the other um, places that I've mentioned. Um, so we, through those Delta Days, we um, look for ways we can collaborate on future projects and impact policy. So our efforts have been focused on educating and informing the public and ourselves. We all know that the stakes are too high for government to be a spectator sport. We're very active in uh Town hall, meet, town hall meetings and co-sponsoring uh, meeting greets and things of that nature. Not exactly uh, supporting individual candidates collectively, but definitely raising political awareness in the city. We definitely have some brothers who are active politically who can inform us. We do a lot of information dis dissemination through our youth group, and then we do some at the uh, at our chapter lo local level in the meetings. Uh, we are uh, in our churches and senior citizen centers and anywhere else. Uh, that we can go to encourage voters to be registered. Uh, we really help them understand the importance of voting, and if they're not registered, we encourage them to do so. We uh, even have a registration booth at our downtown festival. We uh, have a table set up so people can stop as they're coming through to either be a part of the the activities that are going there or just our spectators and we have a, a place that they can stop and register to vote. Our chapter was also involved in a letter writing campaign to help keep this library open with a millage renewal. Mm -hmm. And many of our, uh, our uh, activities have been going on for a while. We do these things as we see the needs, and we get involved as we see a need to be involved. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this next question, and I'm going to keep it going, is <clears throat> extremely important to me personally. Um, many of the organizations are um, either 100 years old or approaching that. And um, there are some who really don't believe that they're still in need, that we're still relevant. There are some who believe that the oppression and the inequalities and the things that existed in the early 1900s when these organizations were found, founded doesn't exist anymore. We laugh. Thank you. Thank you. And so the question is, are fraternities and sororities still relevant? And if there are personal stories that you can share about the benefits of being a member of your organization, please share. The question is, are we still relevant? Is there still a need for fraternities and sororities to exist today? And we'll start with Isaiah, Alpha Phi Alpha. I think that, that it's very, very, very important to understand that many of the issues that we were fighting for or our organizations were fighting for over 100 years ago 
are still prevalent and, and issues going on now. A lot of those things were, were outward. You knew exactly who, per se, the issue was with. And now there's a veil and system, there, there are systematic issues that are going on that we still need to fight and we need to find a way to fight it. I think our educated individuals need to step up and definitely make that, make that fight for us. Uh, educating and building awareness for people who don't understand or aren't exposed to many of the issues is definitely one of our, our targets now. Definitely our, our young people are probably the primary focus because, I mean, there's a song that says, I believe the children are the future, teach them well and let them lead the way. A lot of us are waving the baton. I'm here as I mean, personal example. I, do I have two minutes on this one? Yeah. You have two minutes. <laughs> I'm going to call your time out, man, but go, keep going, keep going. A personal example, I'm, I, I'm I, 29 years old, and it is not known for a 29-year-old to be the president of, of the chapter locally. And, and that's definitely because we're promoting leadership. And the, the baton was waved in my face, and I had to take it and run with it. I mean, it, that, Responsibility to make sure that our young people are prepared. That way, we feel comfortable passing off the baton to these young people, so that they can go forward with many of the. I mean, these issues aren't going away if we don't have people to fight them. If we're not passing down knowledge to our young people, then we're definitely not even in the fight at all. Thank you. Thank you. And so we all work with you. We all have groups that we work with, and we are all there so that they see us and they know who we are and they may want to someday be one of us. So we are relevant because we can be models in our community, we can be models in our church, wherever we go that there are youth, we can help. We can show them that there's another way, that there's things that they can do with their lives that they may not know about if we're not there to be models for them, to be role models. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, to Sharon Sawyer, what are the Delta's position on are we still relevant today? Can I have the time that they didn't use? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you 10 seconds from each of them. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say I am a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a dynamic organization dedicated to sisterhood, scholarship, and service. As I reflect on the importance of Delta in American history, as well as its current impact in our society, I think back to 98 years ago when 22 young women who were students at Howard University were moved to create Delta Sigma Theta. They wanted a sisterhood that would address the oppression that plagued women and African Americans. Delta was unique in that it rejected the focus on socializing in a fraternal organization. Rather, Delta's founders were called to political and social action. True to their mission, their first public act, two months after the sorority was founded, the founders marched. They were involved in participation in the Women's Suffrage March in Washington, D.C. in March 1913. The mission of the founders of Delta Sigma Theta, set forth in 1913, is still incredibly relevant today. Deltas throughout the world serve communities in need, particularly those of color. Deltas lobby to U.S. legislators annually to create ongoing legislative solutions. We work to uphold voting rights. We promote me mental and physical health. We encourage financial fortitude. We mentor youth to promote, to promote academic achievement and self-esteem. And we pro provide vital economic and health resources to women in the East, West, and Southern Africa. Southern Africa. The work we do as Deltas is important because we serve as sisters. Deltas support each other in our work as Deltas, but also in our personal, social, and professional development. On a daily basis, I am inspired and motivated by the intelligent, resilience, resilience and talent of my sorority sisters. That, serve, that I serve with in my local chapter. They are a diverse group of black women working for a common cause. I would not have the fortune of knowing many of these women, but for our service in Delta. They hail from many professional backgrounds. They are teachers, managers, writers, lawyers, motivational speakers, engineers, mothers, advocate, 